I think this video will be very useful for people with children or adults that grew up with very strict, explosive, abusive parents. So there's something very interesting about our brains. The child is born obviously with all of the parts of the brain there, but the development is very, um, it comes in stages. So the baby is born with the amygdala and the amygdala is this little, little tiny ball in the middle of your brain and it makes part of your limbic system. And it's responsible for emotions, fear, anxiety. So that part of the brain for, of the baby is already developed and it's the one that commands the baby. So that's why it's always crying and it's very emotional, right? When the prefrontal cortex, which is the part right here, um, which is responsible for your rational thinking, your um, cognition and just ability to make self-regulate and make good decisions. Well, this part of the brain is absolutely not developed in little babies, not even in little children. And the development of that is very slow. And it takes, so at 10 years old, the child will have the same amount of neuron cells as an adult, but the connections are still being formed through adolescence. And it, it's said to be only complete when you're 25 years old. So you're stupid until then, right? Making poor decisions, irrational decisions, um, so it's normal, obviously, for the kid not to know how to self-regulate because this part of the brain is not developed. So they do not know how to self-regulate and they're always acting on emotion. So, well, the, the role of the parent is very important in either determining if this child will be able to self-regulate and develop its prefrontal cortex um, adequately or they will become an adult that does not know how to self-regulate. And so um, when the mother or the father, the child is upset for some reason and they just ignore the child or they explode at the child or they're not, um, you know, punish the child for being upset, do something instead of soothing this child. And when I say soothing, it's not spoiling them. It is recognizing their emotion, um, telling them that their emotion is valid, but this and this and this and this is the, the reason that they can't have what they want or they can't do what they want to do right then and then teaching them skills to cope with that emotion um, that will determine that they will become an adult that can self-regulate well if the mother does not do that or the father does not do that um, this child does not know how to self-soothe and they grow with that and when they become an adult they're going to resort to things such as sex, addictions of any kind, drugs, alcohol, eating. So they're gonna try to pacify and calm that amygdala response. They're gonna be always in their amygdala brain as an adult. So they'll be more explosive or more emotional. They'll cry because of everything. They just can't deal with their emotions and they can't self-soothe and self-regulate. So um, it's very important for parents to implement these techniques. So first of all, have a routine. Children need to know what to expect, when to expect it. It's just easier for them. If they don't have a routine, they're insecure all the time. So if they know that they have time to wake up, time to do homework, time to, to go to bed, time to play, time to do chores, anyway, um, a routine is extremely important for them to start knowing how to self-regulate because that calms them down, knowing what to expect. And then you want to be, every time they fret or they cry or they do something, you want to be responsive. Um, so, you know, go down to their eye level and say, what, what's wrong? Talk to me, tell me your emotions. Um, increase the vocabulary of that kid so that they can express themselves. So are you sad? Are you angry? What's going on? Talk to me. And really encourage them to express their feelings rather than swallowing it and um, obviously be patient and knowing that this takes time. The prefrontal cortex, this human, will be only able to make informed, rational, good decisions by the time they're 25. Until then, they're still in formation. And this is so enlightening to me. I don't have kids, but I had a sister that was 18 year, years younger than I am. And if I only knew this information, I would have reacted with her much better. Um, so information is, is very empowering. Uh, so you want to be 
patient because it takes time for them to learn these skills. They're always going to be whining and crying and throwing tantrums and fits because they don't know that that amygdala part of their brain is very fired up. And it's funny because some children are not like that, right? That really depends on the way they were conceived. Uh, they were, I guess, not conceived, but the way their gestation was. The amount of adrenaline this mother put in, the amount of fear and anxiety this mother signaled to this child. So some children will be more um, activated in their amygdala than others. And so next is to soothe them. So not spoil them, not give them what they want, but soothe them and teach them self-soothing techniques. For children, there are, um, you can use a little blankie or a stuffed animal. If you believe in pacifiers, you can use a pacifier, but do not soothe them with food because you are programming this child into an eating disorder of either binge um, and just, just dysregulation and using food as comfort. Food is not comfort. Food is, is, is to be enjoyed, and but it's um, not something to soothe your emotions, if, if you know what I mean. So definitely don't use, like don't give them a bottle to soothe them. Breastfeeding is one thing because they're a little baby, but um, once they're bigger, you don't want to give them, oh here, here's an ice cream or here's a lollipop. Okay, and so these are the techniques that you would apply for the child so that you create a child that knows how to self-regulate as an adult. Now, if you are an adult that, you, if you were a child and now you're an adult that you don't know how to self-soothe and you resort to shopping or porn or alcohol or drugs or eating, to self-soothe because you do not know how to deal with your emotions. It's probably because it's not your fault. Um, it's probably because you were not taught. Your amygdala brain is always turned on. It's more developed than your prefrontal cortex brain. So what are the self-soothing and self-regulating skills that an adult can implement? Well, it's the ones that I always talk about here. It is conscious breath. So be aware of your breath. Pay attention to the inhales and the exhales. Do exercise or movement of any kind, mindfulness of your bodily sensations, so even of your emotions. I think I talked about this one day in the stories about how you have to sit through your pain, sit through your anguish, and not try to cover it up with food, television, and stuff like that. And guys, it can be simple as television. People are just self-soothing with television just to not think about their problems. And um, that is really not taking care of the issue, right? So meditation, prayer, self-expression by the arts. So if you're a writer, you write. If you wanna sing, you sing. If you play an instrument, you play. If you like to dance, you dance. You paint, you pottery, you do whatever. But something that can express those feelings through arts. It's, it's a self-regulating um, technique. And you can also do self-talk that is caring and nurturing. We are very mean to ourselves. If we had people tell us what we tell ourselves, we would probably not be friends with them. So we are always talking ourselves neg to ourselves in a very negative manner. And um, one of the ways for you to self-regulate is actually giving yourself grace. And, oh, I just exploded with so, so and so. Well, that's because probably I'm in my amygdala brain and not my pre prefrontal cortex brain. Let me take a breath here. Let me color a little bit. Let me dance a little bit. Let me do something and calm down. So I hope this was very, very helpful for you. It was extremely helpful for me when I learned about this.